worship you tonight God we recognize your presence we recognize your position and we recognize your power we recognize your presence because you're here you're in this room you're in our lives there's nowhere we can go where you won't be we recognize your position because you're the owner, you're the ruler, you're the sustainer. It's your breath, it's your life, it's your ability. Who we are is your possession. And tonight we recognize your power. God. You're omnipotent. God, you have all authority. Come on, I hope I'm ministering to somebody. God, you have all rule. You have all dominion. God, you have the power and the ability to cause the last to be first and the first to be last. You have the power to turn a heart any way that you desire. Father, we recognize your presence. Lord, we recognize your position. And Father, allow us to be aware of your power tonight. We thank you tonight that allow your presence, we'll allow your position and we will allow your power to give us a perspective. To allow us to see our lives. To allow us to see the things we've been worrying about. To allow us to see the things that we were afraid of. That we've been hesitant to do. Allow us to realize, God, that that's not our place. It's not our place to be fearful. It's not our place to be hesitant. It's not our place to be unsure and unaware when we serve a God who is present. When we serve a God who has positioned himself within us and we serve a God who has all power and authority and right now father i believe i'm ministering i believe you're ministering the people in the room god who've had anxiety who've been worrying who've been afraid who've been anxious who've been manipulated who've been manipulating because we lost sight that you are present your position and you are all powerful but tonight god give us a new perspective so we thank you tonight, God, that we recognize that you're holy. We thank you tonight that we recognize that you're holy. Father, we thank you that we recognize that we serve a holy God who is righteous, who is present, who has a position, and who's all-powerful. And we thank you as a result of the word of God tonight that we're going to grow up. Oh, I'm going to say that again because that's the, that's the cry of our spirit. We thank you tonight that as a result of the engrafted word that we receive, believe, and put into operation into our lives, that there will be a new growth. There'll be a new birth. There'll be a new revelation. There'll be a new layer of your presence and your power that will give way. Come on, I'm, believe me, I'm prophesying to you that will give way to a new season, a new reality, a new way of living, 
a new way of operating that will line up with your promise. And for that, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we have great expectation in the mighty matchless name. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the ruler. He's the owner. He's the provider. He's the healer. He's the mind regulator. Am I talking to anybody in the room? He has all power and all authority, and he is declaring it's time for a new growth in our lives. It's time for a new dimension of his authority that will give way to a new season of his promise. And if you are in agreement with that prayer and you're ready to walk in and step into it, can we just give him 20 seconds of your own personal toda praise, of your sacrificial praise, of the praise that I ain't really even want to come here on Wednesday. I'm tired. Uh, stuff's been bad. Stuff's been crazy. But I serve a worthy God. I serve a holy God. I serve an ever-present God. I serve a God who has all authority in his hand. And he is sharing that authority with me because I can't wait to grow up. Come on, if that's you, give God one more big shout of praise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Well, before you're seated or while you're seated, give the next person next to you a high five and say, it's time to grow up. Come on, say, it's time to grow up. Anybody excited about that? Someone say, it's time to grow up. Praise God. Amen. Well, welcome to Fire Night Wednesday. Come on, Family Church, can you make some noise for everybody that's watching on YouTube? Make some noise. Come on, come on, come on. I know it's Wednesday, but you're in the house. Someone say, I'm in the house tonight. Praise God. Amen. Well, welcome to the family church where you belong. My name is Pastor Ted Winsley. I am the pastor. Uh, I want to I hear some noise for people uh, who, who don't have low self-esteem. I am the pastor of the baddest church in the world. I can just say it. Come on. Come on. Amen. And I'm not by myself. In front of me is my wifey for lifey, 31 years, winning the game, Pastor Dawn Winsley, our co-pastor. Praise God. And I want to acknowledge some very important people. Those are first-time attenders. If this is your first time with us, not on a Sunday service. You could have been here on a Sunday. Uh, that's great. We thank you for being here on a Sunday. But this is your first time coming on a Wednesday. It might be your first time altogether. Or you might even be a member, but this is the first time you showed up on a, on a Wednesday night. If that's you, can you just raise your hand in the air? Come on and wave it like you just don't care. Look at all the new Wednesday nighters. Come on, somebody. Praise God. Somebody say, welcome to Wednesday night. Somebody say, welcome to Wednesday night. Amen. And for those of you who are absolutely brand new here, because I know I confused you a little bit, um, not just new on Wednesday night, but this is your absolute first time uh, in the building. Could you click on that QR code? We want to connect with you. Um, we want to welcome you. We want to invite you into the fam. Uh, and so if you do that, we'll be able to get your information and connect with you. Is there anybody who's excited about the Word of God tonight? Or is it just me? Am I just the only one? I'm not the only one? Praise God. And so we want to even let our first timers know that this is a Bible believing. Somebody say this is a Bible believing. Somebody say this is a Bible teaching. Church of God. Say like that, church of God. Amen. It's not a church of God, but it's a church of God. Amen. Praise God. And here at the family church, we have notes. And so if you, for all of our first timers or, or everyone in the room, if you would like to get the digital notes, um, go ahead and click on the QR code uh, with your phones or your digital apparatus or apparatus, and you'll be able to get the digital notes. And as you see, it's already happening already. And for those of you, you say, I don't want no digital notes. Give me some paper. Raise your hand in the air. And these amazing ushers are passing out my paper notes. Praise God. All right. So here we go, guys. Is anybody ready for the Word of God? I feel like 
Yeah, that's the song. Is anybody ready for the Word of God? Who's ready for the Word? Praise God. I'm excited. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Amen. So come on, let's just jump right into uh, this might be the sixth installment. Is anybody being blessed by this series? You can't wait to grow up. Praise God. Is it all right? Is it okay that I'm taking my time in this thing? All right. I'm a, I'm a, don't, don't be mad if, if, if we uh, if we on here on Christmas. No, we're not going to be here on Christmas. Amen. But, but no, th 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 this really um, has been blessing my soul. And just as a pastor, I realize that this is where God wants us to be because we know that 2024 is the year of what? This is the year of receiving what? Covenant promises. But how many of you know, uh, we, we talk about it all the time, we're, we're slight sports fans, that God is like uh, an amazing quarterback. How many of you know that? That God does not throw the ball to a person, he throws it to a place. And so we are in desperate desire to become the people and in the place that God has us to be. Amen. All right, so come on, turn your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, um, and, and, and we're just gonna, we're gonna keep growing. Somebody say, oh, I'm gonna keep growing. All right, here we go. Let's read. It says what? It says, so you must what? First Peter, uh, First Peter chapter 1, verse 14, he writes and he says what? So you must live as what? Okay, I done lost the room. It says, so you must live as what? As God's obedient children. It says why? It says, don't do what? Come on, tell your neighbor, say, don't slip back. Watch this. It says, don't slip back into what kind of ways? Come on, it says, don't slip back into your old ways, what? Of living to satisfy your own desires. It says what? You didn't know any better when. Come on, how many of you remember when you didn't know no better then? See, but how many of you know that the Bible says that when I was a child, what? I reasoned like a child. I thought as a child. I spoke as a child. It says, but now that I'm an adult, now that I'm desiring maturity, what does the Scripture say? I'm now going to put away childish things. And so this is what I love about this season that God has us in. This is the season of no more excuses. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Come on. You enjoyed that? I enjoyed that. Somebody say, this is the season of no excuses. In other words, this is the season that, that, watch this, that if I didn't know better, I'm going to know better now. Somebody say, if I didn't know better, I'm going to know better now. And so I love this. He says, so therefore, look, you, you, you can't live the, the, the way you used to live. You have to live as a mature, obedient child. Stop slipping back. Somebody says, stop slipping in the darkness. That's a song. What well, was this? And it goes on and it says, look here. It says, it says, the way we used to live was we used to satisfy our own desires. You mean it says what? But you didn't know any better then. Come on, verse 15, it says what? But now you must be, come on here, this, this is where we're going to be today. It says, but now you must be, come on, talk to me. It says, but now you must be, it says, but now you must be holy in, somebody say everything. We're going to find out today that holiness is not, is not an action. Um, holiness, is, holiness is not um, wearing white gloves. Talk to me. We're going to find out that holiness is a nature. Some might say holiness is a nature. And some might say holiness is a culture. And we're going to find out that holiness is the nature and the culture that fosters new growth. Come on, somebody. Some might say holiness is the nature and the culture that fosters new growth. Who knows what new growth is? Come on, ladies. See, ladies know what new growth is. And <laughs> see, they, they all laughing. I mean, we, we, we don't, y'all, gentlemen, y'all don't know what new growth is, but ladies know. Ladies know. Ladies say, we know what new growth is. How, 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 many, know, how many know that new growth takes place when there's a culture or an environment that, watch this, that doesn't tear down, but it builds up? Come on, two claps. And, and so, so that, that's what we're going to learn today. We're going to learn that holiness is the culture. It's the key that's needed for new growth. Has anybody ever in your spiritual growth ever hit a wall? Talk to me. Come on, don't look at me like I'm looking at you. In, in other words, I, I'll give you another word. It's called stagnation. It, it, it's called, it's called, guess what? W when I'm reading, when I'm praying, it feels like nothing. I come to church, I ain't getting nothing. I mean, you know, it ain't because the preacher's not good. Come on, somebody. But, but stagnation, watch this, stagnation doesn't happen around us. Stagnation happens within us. 
And we're going to find out that stagnation happens when we lose and stop operating in the key that creates new growth and is called holiness. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Somebody say, I'm ready, I'm, I'm ready for the new growth. And somebody say, I'm tired of stagnation. Here's the danger with stagnation. Watch this as you can get used to it. Here's the danger with not growing is, watch this, that you can actually get to a place where you start feeling and believing that it's natural when how many of you know for someone who is spiritually alive, watch this, spiritual death is not natural. Staying in the same place is not natural. The Bible says you were created to grow from glory to glory. And we're going to find out that the new growth takes place through holiness. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Are you, you ready for this? Come on, come on. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I think he's going to be all down your, in your lane. Come on, somebody say, I, I, I think he's coming into your house in a minute. Come on, praise the Lord. Y'all didn't even want to say it. Amen. Praise God. Come on, watch this. Verse 16, it says what? For the Scripture says, read with me, it says what? For the Scripture says what? You must be holy. Why? Because I'm holy. And we're going to find out, watch this, that holiness is the nature and the culture of God. Holiness is what we fell out of. Holiness is, watch this, ho holiness is literally the culture and the environment of heaven. Holiness is the culture and the environment that causes you to maintain your spiritual growth. And when you got born again, you got called back to holiness. Somebody say, when I, two claps. Somebody say, when I got born again, I got called back into holiness, into my culture, and into my nature. And I love this, and, and, the, and, and Peter, and here in 1 Peter, it quotes the words of God that he says, watch here, you must be holy. Watch this, and, and notice that, that you're not supposed to be holy. Watch this, because you go to church. Come on, somebody. How many know, how many know that going to church? Y'all know this. How many know going to church don't make you holy? Come on now, that's a whole lot of up in the church. Talk to me. Holiness, watch this, going to church. So, so, so you're not holy because... You go to church, you're not holy because you pay your tithes. Talk to me. You're, you're not holy because you change your voice when you pray. Talk to me. The scripture says you're supposed to be holy because God is holy. And, and, and we're, we're, we're going to learn today, I'm just flowing now, we're going to learn today that, that oftentimes our greatest struggle with holiness is that we don't realize that that's where we came from. If you remember when, 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 Moses was, uh, yeah, when Moses was in the wilderness, the scripture says that when he, when he had his first encounter with, with the holy God, y'all remember what, what God's instructions to Moses were? He said, remove your, who knows what he, what he told Moses? He said, remove your sandals. Why? He said, because the ground that you're standing on is holy. And, and now here's my point, because God shared that with me when I was, when I was, I was uh, sitting down here, uh, just that revelation. Well, why did he say remove your sandals? For two reasons. Watch this. Because his sandals were, were unholy. Watch this. And, and the ground was holy, and God didn't want there to be any separation from what is holy to what is holy. Well, what do you mean, Pastor Ted? Because God, at the same time that he was declaring that the ground was holy, he was also declaring, Moses, you're holy too. Oh, y'all hearing me? And he was saying, right now, your sandals are separating holy from holy. And one of our biggest issues, and I know, I know this messing with you right now, one of our biggest issues with walking in the culture uh, and the nature of holiness is realizing that, guess what? Holy is where I came from. Are you hearing me? Holy is the destination of my life. Talk to me. Holy is the culture that God has called me to live in and to multiply. Somebody give God a shout of praise. And we're going to find out that holiness, somebody say holiness, is synonymous to my new growth. Come on, give God a shout of praise. So First Peter, watch this. He says, for the scripture says what? You must be holy. Why? Because I am holy. Let's read. It says what? It says holiness is a what? It says holiness is a topic that is often misunderstood among Christians. And, and like I said, even that revelation, it, it, it blessed me so when I was standing down there and God gave me that revelation about Moses. Like why, do, why did I ask Moses to take off his sandals? Because I wanted Moses to realize that he was holy too. 
that he came from holiness. He has a right to be holy. And watch this. And anything that is stopping you from walking in holiness is an enemy to who you really are. And so it goes on. It says what? It says what? Many people believe what? That holiness what? Is a state of what? Of personal conduct. In other words, we believe that holiness is something that we physically do. Uh, and, 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 and I'll tell you this, that oftentimes we believe that, that holiness is, is restraining from stuff. How many of you know, just because, watch this, just because you didn't have sex this week. Come on, talk to me. Now, I'm talking about for those of you who ain't married. Just because you didn't have sex this week doesn't mean, watch this, that you are, are, are operating in holiness if it was on your mind all week. The, two claps. Nobody enjoyed that. Come on, talk to me. So, so understand that holiness is not, is not not doing. Watch this. Holiness is not restraining from something. Holiness is, has nothing to do with, with personal conduct. Let's read. It says what? It should be yours. Watch this. It says that many people believe that holiness, what, is a state of personal conduct. It says what? When actually our personal conduct should be a result of of holiness. It should be a result of the culture that's on the inside of me. Uh, it's so, supposed to be a result of the nature that's on the inside of me. I'll never forget when, um, Pastor Dawn, you remember when your, your brother Michael, I didn't mean to call his name, but it's okay. Cat's out the back. When your brother Michael, when he got married, and, uh, and, and uh, I'm going to cover him, okay? When your brother Michael got married and, and we went to the, um, what was it called, Pastor Dawn? We went to the, uh, one of them parties that you go to before they get married. The reception, what is it called? Best, I don't know. We went to one of the, one, one of the, where everybody has dinner, okay? And, and uh, it wasn't Michael, but rehearsal dinner. It wasn't Michael, but it was the people that were around Michael, okay? Somebody said it wasn't Michael. Okay, so it was people that was, that was around Michael, and they said, hey, hey, uh, Minister Ted, because I, I wasn't a pastor at the time. He said, hey, you know, we're going to go to the strip club, but you can't go, Minister Ted. And, and. And I was like, you know, I felt all the vibes. And I said, ho, ho. And I, I messed with him for a second. I said, wait a second now. No, it's not that I can't go. And, they were, you know, everybody got quiet. <laughs> what? what? Says, it's not that I can't go to the strip club. It's that I have absolutely no desire to go to the strip club. And because I have no desire, I actually now have the restraint and the ability to carry out how I really feel on the inside, unfortunately, many of you don't want to go, and you're going anyway. And, and, and so, so, so it's important that we understand, watch this, that holiness, that the culture, that the nature of holiness, it, it is what causes you to act the way that you act. Acting doesn't make you holy. Does that make sense? And this is important because, how many of you know, if you're not walking in holiness, you can't keep up the act. Y'all didn't enjoy that. <laughs> if you're not walking in holiness, you can't keep up the act because it is an act. Because you're only restraining yourself. Well, watch this. You're, you're only not smacking him or, 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 or cussing or, or doing whatever it is that, that you shouldn't be doing. But you're only doing it because people are watching. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. How, how, many, of you know, how many of you know it's easy to be holy in church? Come on, and, and some of us struggle with that. Talk to me. But, but watch this, but real holiness has nothing to do with your actions. It has everything to do with the culture. It has everything to do with the nature and the spiritual growth that is now compelling you and empowering you not to act, but to live. Is anybody excited about this? And, 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 and I love it. I, I, I've said this before that when you walk in holiness, watch this, you have the mindset that I don't care who's watching. Keep the cameras running. Oh, y'all don't hear me. I, I, I don't care who's looking at me. I don't care who's watching. It's okay. Keep the cameras running because what's on the inside of me is going to cause me to be natural. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise that you can't wait to grow up. All right, here we go. So, so watch this. So, so let's read it. It says here, uh, it, it says here, it says what? It says we will what? We're going to discover that God will not just bestow holiness on you. Watch this. We must, number one, come on, here's, you, you can write this in. There are three things that have to happen as a result to holiness that enable the new growth. We have to do what? We have to receive it. We have to grow in it. And we have to walk in it by faith. So, so holiness is, is something that you receive, or in other words, it's, it's something, it is a nature and a culture that you acknowledge 
that is mine. Are y'all with me? In, in other words, you realize that, that, that guess what? That, 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 that honoring God with my life, honoring God with my attitude, honoring God with my body, guess what? It is my birthright. Somebody give God a shout of praise. So I receive that. And once you receive it, guess what? You're able to grow in it. Is that making sense? And, and, and that's the beauty that when we begin to walk in holiness, how many of you know that holiness creates a growth? It creates maturity. Um, it, it enables you to be free. Um, I'm going to tell you something. As you begin to grow in holiness, I say this a lot, you'll get delivered from people. Can I, can I say that again? As, as you begin to grow in holiness, in this culture, in this nature, you'll get delivered from having to feel like I need to please people, from having to feel like I have to get his acceptance, I have to get her acceptance. Holiness, it be becomes the culture and the nature. All I want to do is please God. Is this making sense? And this is important because in your development, in your growth, in your walk by faith, pleasing God is going to make people angry. Are you hearing me? Pleasing, pleasing God is going to make people uncomfortable. Pleasing God is going to cause people, watch this, to have to look at you and see a mirror. Are y'all with me? Because how many of you know, as you begin to grow, especially your friends, how many of you know that, 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 that most of the time, especially before you were saved, birds of a feather flock together? Talk to me. How many of you know that most of the time, dysfunction chooses dysfunction? Talk to me. Come on now. Don't act like you're all holy and sanctified. And so therefore, watch this. When, when one of the two starts to grow, starts to mature, then that other person becomes a mirror, and it shows that person who they really are or how they've been operating because I've decided to stop covering up the way you're acting by acting like you. Now I'm going to act like God. Is that making sense? Okay. And, and, and so, so this is important that I share this, that as we develop our, our spiritual growth and as we begin to walk in holiness, there will be seasons of separation. Come on, somebody. Not your marriage because some of y'all are excited about that. Not your marriage. But, but there will be seasons, because you guys are one, there will be seasons where, where literally as you begin to grow spiritually, you're going to realize that the holiness is now dictating that I just can't, I can't watch that anymore. Are y'all with me? You know what? That's not funny anymore. Come on, talk to me. That ain't my show no more. Come on, talk to me. I can't be around those people anymore. Watch this. In that setting. Now, those people can be around me. Come on, y'all with me? Yeah, does that make sense? And I'll, I can't be around those people over there, but guess what? But those people are welcome to join me in holiness. Is this making any sense? Right, here we go. Come on, let's read. It says what? It says, somebody say tonight. Come on. Tonight we're going to begin. Amen. This, this, this thing is already swelling, Pastor Dawn, so we'll see if we get through all of it tonight. But let's read. It says what? Tonight we're going to begin to do what? To learn that holiness, what is it? It is, somebody shout, it's the key. That holiness, what? It is the key to what? To new growth. Somebody give God a shout of praise for the new growth that's happening even right now as you're sitting here. Come on, let's read. Come on, let's read. It says what? So what is holiness? We're going to do some studying tonight. What is holiness? This is so dope. Watch this. Holiness, look at this, is God coming into your life and replacing himself in you. I, I, I got to read that again because that is so, so dope. Come on, come on. Let, let's read that again. What is holiness? Holiness is what? Holiness is when God comes into your life, comes, and how many of you know that the moment that you get saved, God comes into your life? I say this all the time. When you get saved, God is not the big man upstairs anymore. Y'all with me? Well, when you get saved, the proximity of the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. Your heart literally becomes a throne for God. Is this making sense? And so holiness, watch this, it is the awareness that God has now come into my life. And what does he do? This is so cool. What does he do? He replaces himself in me. Now, Pastor Ted, why did you use the word replaces? Because he used to be there. Come on, replaces is what? re and place. Talk to me. How many of you know that you used to be the place for God? And the moment that you accept Jesus Christ, it's now he begins to replace himself. 
He begins, to, and, 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 and this, is, this is a revelation, and I'm going to slow it down, that we have to understand because we struggle with holiness because we believe that we're not worthy to be holy when the reality is, is holiness is who you were. And so when, when, when we accept Christ, what's happening is, is God is now bringing back your culture. Come on, you know, I see the Latinos make some noise. Come on, somebody. Black people make some noise. You know, we just, we had to just call ourselves black because we don't know where we came from. But, but how many know the, the reality is that white people make some noise too? Amen. Praise God. But watch this. But the reality when we accept our true nature, I say this all the time, we realize there's only one race. Are you hearing me? When, when, when we begin to walk in holiness, we realize we only got one culture. His name is God. This is why the church is so divided, and, and, and I'm, uh, I'll probably preach on this after the election, okay? But, but this is why everybody gets so polarized, because we actually turn something that is not even spiritual, which is politics and voting. Come on, talk to me. It has, it has spiritual implications, but it is not a spiritual activity. Are y'all with me? We, we allow something like that to divide us when we forget that, guess what? We were all once holy, and God is all calling us back to holiness, and when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we only have one nature and we only have one culture. And how many of you know, and he voted for us. Somebody give God a shout of praise. Amen. All right, that's my little voting comment. I'm done. Come on, let's read. Come on, let's read. It goes on. It says what? Holiness is when God, he comes into our life. And what does he do? He replaces himself in you. And it says what? Holiness is separation from sin. Holiness is being purified by God. Watch this. And walking under the authority of God. So, so, so when you understand that now that I'm born again, holiness is my culture. Holiness is my nature. Now there comes an authority to be holy. Are y'all with me? Now there comes a grace to be holy. Now you realize that guess what? Ho the word no is holy. Y'all ain't with me. In, in other words, because God now comes inside of you and begins to replace himself in your life and holiness is now your culture, holiness is now your nature, now watch this, I'm not afraid to separate. Y'all with me? In, in, in other words, watch this. In other words, what you're saying is I'm not afraid to cross over. I'm not afraid to acknowledge that this world is not my home. Talk to me. I'm not afraid to acknowledge that, that guess what, that the things of the world are no longer what gratifies me. I'm no longer afraid to acknowledge that God is my source God is my provider, and watch this, and if everybody left me, I still have God. Somebody give God a shout of praise. And, and, and that's, that's the point that I'm making as we begin to walk in holiness, you get delivered from needing people. Is that all right? Because how many of you know you can't help what you need? Hmm, y'all don't hear me. I'm going to say that slower. You're here to help people. How many of you know you can't help people if you need them? What you'll find, you, you will manipulate what you need. Talk to me. But when you realize that God has now made me self-sustaining in my relationship with him, I don't need people. I'm here to help people. I want to be in relationship. Somebody say, I want to be in relationship. Come on, I'm going to help somebody. Somebody say, I want to be in relationship with him. Somebody say, I want to be in relationship with her. Come on, get delivered. Somebody say, but I don't need it. Give God a shout of praise. Somebody's getting delivered in the room. Come on. Come on, let's read. Watch this. Come on, it says here. Watch this. It says what? So, so what is holiness? We're still talking about holiness. Are y'all getting anything out of this? We've got 12 more minutes. Watch this. Holiness is, I'm going to cuss. Can y'all handle it? Holiness is submission. Come on, I'm cussing to your flesh. Holiness is what? It is submission to the lordship of Jesus Christ. How many of you know when you submit to Christ, you walk in holiness? When you realize that, guess what? His agenda is higher than mine. Watch this. His, his desires are greater than mine. And how many of you know, watch this. Submission does not mean, watch this, that I lower myself. It means that I raise him above me. Oh, is this making sense? See, you don't lose yourself in submission. 
Oh, y'all, y'all, can y'all, y'all with me? See, can, can, can I go further? Because submission in, in itself, the word submission actually implies before you can submit, there has to be something that was equal. Did, did, did you hear me? Y- y'all didn't enjoy that. <laughs> Somebody say, before I submit, on, let me talk to the ladies. So, uh, ladies say, before I submit, I first have to be equal. Do you understand that? There can be no submission if there is not a level of equality. How many of you know that's why God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Let them have dominion. Because guess what? Because in order for them to submit to us, they have to be, watch this, they have to be, now handle what I'm saying, they have to be in our class. Talk to me, you're in the God class. You're not God. So I'm going to say, I'm not God, but I am his offspring. And watch this, and because of that, he puts you in the position where you can submit. And how many know submission, when we submit to the lordship of God, we actually begin to walk in our holiness. Is this making sense? Come on, let's read. It says what? It says submission to the lordship. What? Submission to the lordship of Jesus. Come on, this is what holiness means. It means drawing near to God. Read it me. It says what? It means walking with God. Let's read. It says what? Holiness will produce, watch this. Holiness will always produce fruit. I need you to hear this. Watch this. Holiness doesn't take fruit. Holiness produces fruit. Come on, how many of you know worldliness takes? The reason why worldliness takes is because worldliness is not connected to a source. How many of you know when you don't have a source, you're a taker? Oh, y'all hearing me? I'm going to say this another way. When, you, when, you don't, when you're not connected to the source, you're a sucker. You drain. How many of you know, watch this. But when you are connected to the source, you bear fruit. Is this making sense? Come on, let's read it. It says what? It says submission to the Lord of Jesus. What? Drawing near to God, walking with God. Holiness will produce what? It'll produce fruit. Watch this. The fruit of holiness. Y'all know this. It, watch this. The fruit of holiness will produce joy in self. And, and, and I say this all the time. How many know that, that when you have joy because you're walking in holiness, You cannot remain, uh, you can't continue with a low self-esteem. Are are you with me? See, see, you you, you can't continue to think lowly of yourself. You you, you can't continue to think lesser of yourself. Y'all with me? You cannot continue to think lesser when you have received the greater. And when the greater comes into your life, there's a fruit, and that fruit is joy. Joy is the revelation and the recognition that the omnipotent God is with me and for me and towards me, and it brings joy. Is that making sense? Come on, let's read. It says here, it will produce what? It'll produce joy in self. Watch this. It'll produce peace with God. See, how many know when you're walking in holiness, you, you begin to realize I'm not guilty anymore? Oh, are y'all with me? See, see, some of us, when we don't walk in holiness, we're waiting for the next shoe to drop. Talk to me. What's the next bad thing that's getting ready to happen? What's the next bad report? How many of you know, guess what? Jesus said that in this life, you will have bad reports. He says, but be of good cheer. We've overcome the report, even before it comes, and if it's bad. Is that making sense? And so when you walk in holiness, watch this. There's joy within you. There's peace with him because guess what? I'm in right relationship with how many know, watch this, when you walk in holiness, there's no more abuse. Y'all with me? And anybody ever seen a child that's been abused? Come on. And, 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 and understand this, let me mess with you now. The, the word abuse means to abnormally use. You can abuse a child with your mouth. You can abuse a child with your words. Talk to me. You can abuse a child because you're not biblical in your discipline, I'm going to help somebody, and instead of using the rod of correction, you use the fist of Muhammad Ali. Talk to me. <laughs> if, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, we're, we're in disciplining our child instead of getting a rod, in other words, an object that, that is not connected to you that you have to go pick up. I know it's Dyfus watching. I don't care. It's biblical. And the Bible says that you use the rod of correction to drive the foolishness out of the child. Somebody give God a shout of praise if that has been administered and it blessed your life. Amen. Praise the rest of you who are praying for holiness. 
But here's the point. But when you don't do that and you hit them with your hand, now, now the tool that's supposed to love them is the one that's punishing them. I'm just flowing. Is this okay? My point is, is that when we abuse, when someone has been abused, they flinch when you move. Because they can't tell, are you going to hurt me or bless me? When you walk in holiness because there's peace with God, there's joy in self. How many of you know that in God's presence, you know you're not guilty, and so therefore you're not expecting something bad. You have great anticipation that God is always good. Is, it, is this helping you? Is this making sense? Come on, come on, let's keep reading. Let's go on. It says here, watch here. It says what? It says there is the, the fruit of homes will, will produce what? Joy in self. Somebody say joy in self. Watch this. Peace with God. Somebody say peace with God. And how many know that when there's joy in you, when there's peace with him, you'll have victory over the devil? Do, do, do you hear me? That, that when there's joy in you and there's peace between you and God, guess what? All you can have is victory because the devil can't stop you, the devil can't hold you, and Satan can't hurt you. Is this making any sense? And so it's important to understand, watch this, that it is holiness that allows us to walk into the nature that allows us to realize I've got fruit, I've got joy, I've got peace, and I've got victory over the devil. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Y'all get anything? We're teaching tonight. Y'all get anything out of this? All right, come on. We're, we're still learning about holiness. Let's read. It says what? Holiness is, watch here. It is the, I'm going to show you this in Scripture. Holiness, what is it? It's a, it's a nature. Somebody say it's a nature. Somebody say it's a character. And watch this. It's a destination. Holiness is a place. Holiness is a place, watch here, that is the destination of every believer. I'll show it to you. John chapter 1 verse 12. Let's read it together. It says what? But as many what? But as many that did receive and welcome him, what did he do? He gave them what? He gave them authority, power, privilege, right to do what? To become the children of God. It says what? That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on on his name, the power to become a son of God is the power of holiness. Bible says that he's going to give you power to become sons of God. And ladies, y'all know that there's a man on the inside of you. Come on, give God a shout of praise, ladies, if you know that there's a man on the inside of you. And when we say man, we're talking about a spiritual man. And so, so when God is saying that, guess what? When you got born again, you, there's a spiritual man. There's a spirit man on the inside of you, and that spirit man has the inheritance of the Son of God, and that inheritance is the power of holiness. Is this making sense? And, and, and so, so in other words, it is holiness is the recognition that I'm an heir. Somebody say holiness is the recognition that I'm an heir. How many of you know, watch this, talk, talk, I'm, I'm going to talk to you, I'm almost done, that air means that I have standards now. See, how, how many of you know, holiness means that, guess what, I don't just accept anything. I don't let you just call me anything. I don't let, watch this, uh, let's nuance this, because I, I, I want to I bless somebody. That How many of you know that when you know who you are and somebody calls you out of your name, you don't even have to get emotional. As a matter of fact, what they're trying to do is to get you emotional. Because you, if you get emotional, it's because you actually think that you are what they called you. But watch this, what will scare them is when you act like, you're not talking to me. Because the reality is, is watch this, when, when you begin to understand who God has called you to be and when you're walking in holiness, the, 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 the reality and the revelation is that I now have, I, I have control over my emotions because I don't get emotional. Come on, let's read. Watch here. It says, watch this. It says what? It says salvation. Look, it is not the end of the rescue. It's the beginning because God wants, watch this, God wants you to become, watch this, something after you're saved. In other words, after you get born again, after you've been rescued, he doesn't just want you to be saved. Now he wants you to be holy. Oh, is this making sense? Come on, let's read. It says here, it says what? If all you do is receive Jesus, watch this, then you'll watch this, then you'll go back to what you were. In other words, if I got Christ 
but, but Christ doesn't make me holy. Are y'all with me? If, if, if I got Jesus and, and, and now I got fire insurance, I'm not going to hell, but Christ doesn't make me holy. Christ doesn't return me to my culture. Christ doesn't return me to my nature. Then you want to know where I'm going? I'm going right back. Somebody say, I thank God I'm not going back. Come on, let's read 2 Peter. Y'all get anything out of this? I'm almost done. 2 Peter, watch this. 2 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 20 says what? For after they have what? For after they have what? For after they've escaped the pollutions of the world through what? Through the full, look at this, through the full personal knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What? They again become entangled in them and are overcome. What? And so what happens? Their last condition is worse for them than the first. How many of you know that people who after they get saved do not get their minds renewed by the word of God, their condition is worse than before they weren't saved? In other words, it's like, okay, you're saved, but now you've become a half-breed. Y'all know with me. See, how how many of you know, watch this, that when you were unsaved, you were never double-minded. Talk to me. Come on, come on, come on, Mark. You know you wasn't double-minded. I'm going to the club. (laughs) I'm going to have that drink. Talk to me. What what nothing nothing double-minded? But but watch this, but now when you get born again, how many of you know your spirit man is whole? But if you do not continue to grow, uh, grow in maturity, learn about holiness and develop your growth, watch this, your, your soul is still worldly. And now you become double-minded. Come on, let's read. It says here, it says what? It says what? So to turn back, watch this, to the holy commandment which was verbally delivered to them. Watch this. I'm sorry, verse 21, it says, for never to have obtained a full personal knowledge of the way of righteousness is what? Would have been better for them, what? Than having obtained such knowledge to turn back from the holy commandment which was verbally delivered to them. Verse 22, it says what? Give me about three minutes and you can start playing. It says, there has befallen them, what? The thing spoken of in the true true proverb, what? The dog, what does the dog do? Turns back to its own vomit. Somebody say, that's nasty. And how many know that's worldliness? See, how nasty is it that Jesus with his own blood pulled you out of the pig pen to make you holy and righteous but you don't realize you're holy and righteous. And you go right back into the mess that you don't belong in anymore. And how many know that, watch this, that after you get clean and you go back into it, there is a point where you're out of place. Come on, somebody. Y'all, y'all, y'all remember, after you got saved and you went back to the club, you, you ain't have the, you know, you just didn't have the same you just couldn't do it the way you, you used to do it because there was something in you that ain't there anymore. Is this making sense? Come on, let's read. I'm almost done. It says what? We must be careful that if we're not walking in holiness, we're walking in worldliness. Watch this. And there is no in between. Come on, let's read. I'm almost done. It says what? Without holiness, what's going to happen? What will I do? I'm going to be disobedient. I'm going to be lustful. I'm going to be ignorant, I'm going to be unprofitable, and watch this, and how many of you know that, that I'm saved now, watch this, that, that, that holiness is my birthright, but I'm still walking in disobedience, I'm still being lustful, I'm still being ignorant, I'm unprofitable, and therefore I'm double-minded, so therefore I feel like there's no hope. Is this making sense? Come on, here we go. We're we're done. It says what? The importance of holiness in our life. It says what? Why? You can start start playing. Why? It is what? The key to my what? To my new growth. Here we go. Come on, let's read together. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. It says what? Even as in what? His love. What did he do? He chose us. He actually picked us out for himself as what? As his own. Where? In Christ. When? before the foundation of the word. I'm telling you, holiness is where you came from. Holiness is the culture that will allow you to be who you've been called and created to be. It goes on. It says here, it says what? That what? That we should be, come on, read it with me. That we should be, don't say don't be scared. Come on, that we should be what? 
that we should be holy, what? Consecrated and set apart for who? For him. Watch this. And how many of you know when you are consecrated, when you are set apart for him, how many of you know I don't care if they got the pictures and the tapes and the video, I'm still blameless. Holiness is supposed to give you a swagger. Holiness is what's supposed to give you confidence because I don't have a sin. Watch this. Because, because I'm not conscious of my sin anymore. What I'm conscious of is the blood of Jesus. Oh, y'all hear me? I'm conscious that his blood removed my sin. Guess what? And, and even if you got the tapes, you want to know what I'm going to say if you show that? That ain't me. Somebody say, that's not me anymore. Somebody say, I'm not the person that did what I used to do because God made me holy. I'm rhyming and I'm somebody new. Somebody give God a shout of praise. It says, blameless in his sight, what? Even above reproach before him in love. Come on, we're done real fast. Number one, it says what? Holiness is not an option. It's God's intention and purpose for our lives now. Guess what? Holiness is not optional, y'all. Holiness is your purpose. Holiness is what you've been called to. And watch this. And until you make a decision to be holy, you're not going to keep growing. Somebody say, but I am. Somebody say, I'm ready to embrace my culture and my nature. Come on, here's number two. It says what? Holiness sets believers apart. How many know when you walk in holiness, I am different. Are you with me? I am special. I do deserve God's best. And guess what? It's not arrogance. It's not pride. It's his nature. As a matter of fact, when you walk in holiness, it should make you humble. So you can be humble and confident at the same time. Come on, let's read. It says what? Holiness, what? Sets believers apart. It says what? Making us God's people and reflecting God's nature to the world. When you walk in holiness, I, I say it all the time in this church, that the greatest form of evangelism is not suffering, it's winning. Come on, somebody give God a shout of praise. When people see you winning in your thought life, winning in your marriage, winning in how you deal with your children, winning in how you see yourself, how many of you know that that reflects the glory of God? It's attractive. And people should say, man, I want what they got because what they got reminds me of what I deserve. Come on, let's read. We're done. Ephesians 1 verse 7. We're done here. It says what? Come on, Pastor Dawn. It says what? In him, who has it? Come on, who's got it? Come on, who's got it? Come on, let's read. It says what? In him, what? We have redemption. Read with me. Deliverance and what? And salvation through what? Through his blood. What did, what did it do? The remission, the forgiveness of our offenses, our shortcomings, and our trespasses. It says what? In accordance with the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Did you get anything out of the word tonight? Come on, let's bow our heads. Father, we give you glory. We honor you. We thank you, God, that we found out today that not only are you holy, but holiness is our nature. Holiness is our destination. Holiness is our culture. And when we receive a holy and righteous God, we have the ability to be holy because he is holy. And you're here tonight with every head bowed and every eye closed. And as the word was coming forth, it allowed you to realize, my goodness, this is what I deserve. My goodness, nothing else matters. My goodness, no wonder why I'm not satisfied. No wonder why I haven't been content because I need to walk in my culture. I need to walk in the nature of God. Tonight I found out it's holy. And if that's you with every head bowed and every eye closed, you recognize, well, first of all, Pastor Ted, I don't really have a, a relationship. This is, this is not about action. This is not about restraint. It's about a, a, a relationship that creates a new culture and a new nature. And you said, Pastor Ted, well, I, I've never walked into that type of relationship, but tonight I want 
him. Or you're here tonight, you said, I am in a relationship, but Pastor Chet, I realize that that worldliness, I realize that not putting him first, I realize that not renewing my mind, I realize that not hearing the truth has actually caused me to not grow. I've, I've been capping, I've been stagnant, but as the word was being preached, it was almost like that there was a river of water, of living water that's reminding me that I'm supposed to dive in, I'm supposed to live in holiness and tonight I want to recommit my heart back to God if that's you I'm not calling you up here I'm not going to embarrass you I want to pray for you but I need to know who I'm praying for and if that's you tonight for either one of those calls can you just lift your hand in the air and I put my hand up I, I, I'm joining you you and you right now all over the building if that's you say Pastor Ted I recognize my my need to walk in holiness. I recognize my need to take a step, to cross the line, to take a radical position, to be who God has called and created me to be. If that's you, just pop your hand in the air all over the building. Come on, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand, I see that hand. If, if, if you're not raising your hand, start praying for people to raise your hand, raise their hands, and you'll recognize maybe I think I'm praying for me. I see those hands. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, put your hands down. Come on, repeat after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you. Come on, repeat after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. That's everybody, all of us. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. There you go. I thank you for loving me so much that you would give me your very best. Tonight I found out your best for me is returning me back to my culture, back to my nature through your Son called Jesus Christ. I receive you, Jesus, as Lord, as Master, as Savior. I receive my holiness. I receive my destination and my character with God. Come on, make this, make this declaration now that you've declared. Say, and now devil, I declare to you, you can no longer fool me, harass me, or try to make me go back. I have a nature. I have a Lord. I have a Savior. His name is Jesus. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. From this day forward, I declare my salvation, my deliverance, and my change. My change. My change in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, can we give God a shout of praise? Were you blessed by the word tonight? Amen. It blessed me. Praise God. Well, well, we have a few moments. We're doing good with time. This is my favorite part. This is Q&A Wednesday, Fire Night Wednesday. For those of you that are watching online, this is an opportunity for you to go ahead. If you were blessed by tonight, to go ahead and, and write something in the comments or ask a question. Now watch this, that pertains to tonight's message, amen? Uh, if you have a question for me that doesn't pertain to anything that I said today, uh, meet, for those that are here, y'all can meet me in, out, out, in the, uh, out in the lobby and I'll answer whatever question that you ask. Um, but but, but uh, Q&A Wednesday is for, for people to share, hey, what did God share with me? It'll bless other people. Um, or, hey, I have a question based off of what I heard. Uh, and, and live audience, make some noise. Were you guys blessed by tonight? Praise God. Amen. So I would love for you. We have people uh, around the uh, sanctuary with uh, microphones. Uh, if you have a question or a comment pertaining to what you heard tonight, go ahead and write it down. Uh, and we're just in a few moments. We'll give you 120 seconds to make the statement or to ask the question. Um, but before we do that, can we hear from Wifey for Lifey, Pastor Dawn Wednesday? What did you get out of tonight? That was so good. I, I um, was just leaping in my uh in my just leaping in my my soul because you know we're teaching a class mm. uh christian life and we talked where, about where are you teaching a class at it's in our bible school amen how many of y'all know that the family church has, has a, a bible accredited school. bible college they amen my students they, come on they're my students <laughs> amen you guys need to to, yeah. to 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 join, get in the class. But well, go ahead. And we no, we just talked about submission last night. Amen. And, yeah, so it was really good. Was that all in your class a little bit? Yeah. Amen. Like, Look Praise at God. That. But but I I wanted to um I wanted to kind of go back because you, you, you talked about the abuse. Yeah. Or the abused child. Yeah. And how, you know, 
they, you know, um, they'll flinch when it's time to, you know. Because I don't know don't what's know about to happen. Are you going to bless me or, or punish me? me? Yeah. And mm -hmm. I thought about, you know, adults. Yeah. Christian adults. Sure. They they do that. Yeah. You know, they're always on guard. Like, yes. You know, are you are you going to take something from right, me? Right, right. Or are you going to Are you going to abuse me? me? Yeah. And, um, you know, and we see that as being pastors all the time, people yeah. just kind of always being on guard. Yeah. And it's like, we're trying to teach you about holiness. Sure. You know, God, we don't want anything from you. So good. God doesn't want anything from you. Amen. We're trying to get something to you. Amen. But you're doing this. And, and, and until you finally realize the thing that God is trying to get to you, yes. that's authentic and it's real, yeah. then now so good. they'll relax and I, they'll receive. I love what you said. And I think oftentimes it's because uh, it's a misunderstanding yeah. because we know that something has to be given up and you think that we're going to take it from you. We're not going to take it from you. You're going to have to relinquish it yourself. So oftentimes that's where the guard is because it's like, you know, I know I need to give things up. I know I need to stop this. Are you going to make me? And the realization is we're not here to make you. We're here to get you to the place where you realize that I'm mature enough to lay the thing down. Amen. That was good. Amen. Praise God. Any, any, any questions or comments? Don't make nothing up. Praise God. Yes. All right, I'm going to try to make this question clear. Okay, uh-oh. <laughs> okay, so you were talking about, like, the things that you get separated from as you get more filled with holiness. Uh -huh. There are going to be seasons in your life where you have to separate from the things, people, places. Yes. Right? Okay. So is it holiness if, if when you're separating, you feel irritation? Like, and sure. not like, um, like you're angry or you have bitterness, but you just, like, I'm having more and more difficulty at work. Yeah. My work environment used to be a place where I could flow very casually. Yeah. And know that this is where I so good. grow, right? But of late, lately, there is an irritability in me. Yeah. Where I, the environment at my work is no longer the environment that is, I guess, pleasing, but I, I'm aware, I gotcha. right? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I love the question because what she's saying is, is as holiness is taking place, so I'm going I'm to lean in to what you're saying, that there are, that, that you will now not be able to tolerate things that you could tolerate because now you're changing. <laughs> and the reason why you could tolerate it is because you used to be like it. And now that you're growing and maturing, now this is important because sometimes what we'll do is we'll think, I need to leave this place. No, I say this a lot. Somebody say the thing that bothers me the most is often showing me what I've been assigned to solve. And so how many of you know if God wants to change your environment, he has to first stop you from participating in it. And so once he changes you, now the environment that you're now supposed to change is going to irritate you until you are, the, you are the agent that brings change. Does that make sense? I, ha I have a comment that leads to a question. Yes. And it could be for some of any teenagers or young adults yeah. that are in here. Yeah. Um, when I was younger, coming up, going in college, um, there were certain friends that I was building relationships with yeah. that were not saved. But yeah. when I decided to be more mature and more, you know, on fire for God, yeah. I felt like I just cut them all off. And I feel like I felt like I was a jerk. Like, looking back, I'm like, should I have just cut them off like yeah. that? Yeah. Like, so for people who maybe are in the same situation and they're trying to figure out, okay, I know I need to set myself apart from these yeah. people, but how do I do it without killing my witness in the yeah, future, so, I guess? Yeah, so good. And, 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 and there, are, there, are, there are layers to that. Um, I, I think that, you know, it, it, if you look in the life of Moses, that Moses was a deliverer, but he was living in and taking part with the thing he was supposed to deliver. So therefore, what did God do? He took him into a wilderness, and the wilderness is the place of death. And so he didn't go to the wilderness to die, he went in the wilderness to kill the thing that was in him so that he could go back to Egypt and deliver it. So, so in other words, there are some times, this, this happened to me with the fraternity where God had to, there was a season where he completely took me away from it. 
um, because there was a time when, so God called me out the fraternity. I'm just using that as an example. He called me out of the fraternity, and then there were some times where I went back prematurely. And then, remember, we were at a, a wedding, and I wasn't supposed to be there, and I wasn't fully delivered. And then they were like, calling all Catholics to the floor, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, you know. And I was like, wait, wait a second, I thought you weren't, you know. But there was, there was still something in me that I was still supposed to be in the wilderness. But, but <laughs> then I had to go back into the wilderness, um, and, and so once God delivered me from that, then he actually could bring me back into that environment and being around them didn't trigger me because that thing wasn't in me anymore. So, so oftentimes, you know, there will be a season of separation so that you can grow. Um, but then after that, you've been called and now, now it's, it's wild, like, like I've got a brand on my arm and it's keloid, and I was going to at one point in time get it lasered off and removed, and God said, absolutely not. Now you are a magnet. And that's exactly what happens when I'm not wearing a shirt. Greeks come up to me, and they say, hey, okay, what's up, Noop? And then I say, well, I used to be, but I'm no longer. And I'm like, what? And that opens the door for a ministry, a, a ministry and oft, oftentimes salvation. So, so from that perspective, I first had to allow God to do something in me so that I could be used to help people. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. Can I just share? Yeah. Um, and I, I also think we, we have to be careful when, when God is changing us um, for you not to try to make something happen. Yeah. Because that's when you give off, um, you know, you think you're better than me, yeah. you know, or... Mm -hmm you know, you start or hypocritical making you're, people, mm -hmm. right, and then, you know, the devil will have you out there, because then you'll, you'll mess up, and yeah. then they'll really, see, you ain't no better than I was, so yeah. I always tell people, just be consistent, just yeah. mind your own spiritual, <laughs> bit. like, do you, like, yeah. you know, God, help me to be consistent in my walk, I was living with somebody when I gave my life to Christ, and I remember, yeah, I was, <laughs> and, you that know, wasn't me. Right, and you know how... Um, but he did have to go. For all of... Right, he did. Yeah. Can I finish, please? My God. She left him for me. I did. <laughs> but anyway, I, I just remember saying, you know, God, you know, um, you're not the author of confusion. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not going to be, you know, confusing. And, um, and I just said, you know, uh, we got bills. We done mixed bills together. And, you know, and... Um, I'm, you you going to do this. And, you know, probably about a week later, you know, he said, you know, I think we should probably just, you know, because I was consistent. Yeah. And there was you some changed. doors, yeah. doors that had to be closed. Amen. And I think, you know, that, that's enough. there was enough. a door that was going to open. Right. <laughs> that was enough for God. If God can use your obedience. So good. That's all he needs. All he needs is your obedience. And then that will walk you towards the place you're supposed to be. And anything around you will bow down. So good. So that way you don't have to feel like you got to do anything. So good. Amen. Amen. All right. Yes. Here's the last one. So I have to ask this question. And it's, come on, it's, come on, uh, rise. I'm sure I'll rise. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask this question. Um, where you said that um, where where God is um, 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 re, like re, uh, replacing Himself in, inside of us, yes, um, I felt led to ask this question. Does that mean that He's repositioning Himself, you know, back, back in us again to to utilize us um, to be able to um, speak out, you know, speak out God's God's glory and God's truth to other people that. Mm -hmm. don't know who, who he is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, but the, 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 the profundity of the statement was the replacing, was the, the realization that he had a place. You know, um, you know, oftentimes when we talk about the fact that when Jesus said that Satan was our father, um, he was, but before he was our, he was our uh, adopted or, or foster dad, but before that happened, we were born of God. So, so when Christ comes back into our life, it is God repositioning or reestablishing himself. So, so the, the reason why I made the comment was so that we realize that holiness, and we'll talk about this on Sunday, is our birthright. It is what we deserve. It is what we've been created for, um, and we've been designed to receive. Yeah. Amen.
Awesome. Yeah. Okay. We have a couple of um, questions online too. Oh, that was as, it. As we're getting. That was it. All right. Yeah. So, so watch this. And, so one more. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll take you. You'll be the yeah. last one. You'll be the last one. Um, Lewis. With the yeah. mic. And then we'll, we'll read the ones yeah. on here. And then, you know, at the end of the day, Pastor Ted, because, yeah. you know, Jesus lives on the inside of us, yeah. we have the ability to be holy. And, so yeah. you can't say, That's I can't point. do it. Well, we no. know you can't do it, yeah. but you can do it through your, you know, it's your you submission come, to you Jesus from. Christ. Yeah. So during your season of separation, which I feel like I'm in right now, how yeah. do you do that and not offend? Because it's almost like the yeah. people you try and explain things to, yes. they almost get offended. Almost like they're, you know, they're almost like angry at the fact that you want to yeah. make a change in your life. And, so how and, do you do and, that without? And, and that's what I was preparing us for because cause you can't. <laughs> you, you, you can't do it and not offend. Um, because if you are trying to do it and not offend, you won't do it. Yeah, um, that's and that's good. why I said that holiness the pursuit of holiness and the power of holiness delivers you from the opinions of people because you get to the point where you know I love you, but I love him more. And I'm sorry that this offends you, but I'm not sorry. You know, and, and so oftentimes that also, and, and, and this is also why I make the point that this is free for somebody, that dating is not evangelistic, that oftentimes what we'll do is we will compromise uh, as a single person to date someone who doesn't know God or, or who doesn't know God, if y'all know what I mean, and thinking that, well, if I date you, well, I'll bring you to God when actually you're stepping down or stepping away from God in order to date them. And what they're learning is that you're actually putting me ahead of God. In your case, what you're saying is I'm not going to put you ahead of God um, even if it offends you. And that actually is the witness, and that is what causes people to see something authentic and say, if that's real, I want some. Yeah. Amen. So good. And I, I think you had said this before. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of times when people, you know, when, they're, when they do get angry or respond a certain way, you know, they're really, I think you may have said this, they're, they're said really, it. right, they're really... They, there's something that they desire and the fact that they see you operating in it, sometimes that brings about anger. Sure. You know what I mean? So that's why we can't get offended, you know what I mean? When or emotional mm -hmm. or take it personal mm -hmm. because you don't know what's happening on the inside of them. Just yeah. stay consistent. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So here we go. Sharissa Blackshear Shasha said. Shasha Ray. Oh, I'm sorry. That was really bad. Shasha Ray. Thank you, baby. Sorry, Shasha Black, Ray. So, sorry, Shasha. Shasha Ray Blackshear uh, said, is holiness a journey or a destination? And what we're learning that holiness is synonymous with spiritual growth. And we learn that spiritual growth is a what? It's a journey. Um, you know, that's why we said it's not levels, it's layers. Yeah. And when you go from layer to layer, then you'll, you'll find yourself in, in different uh, situations or positions that then require for more layers and layers. So, um, no, yes, holiness is a journey. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and we don't arrive until the scripture says that we are face to face and we are like him. It says, yeah. in other words, once holy, are you always holy? So that's a different question. Um, so, yes. So, in other words, you can never be any more holy than you are. Now, the question is, will I walk in the holiness that God has for me? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yep. I was thinking, you know how, like, when people try to make something happen, and you can put yourself in a season, and you're not there. Mm -hmm. And then it comes off fake. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's sure. like, you know, you come off, and that, that's where, that's that person who thinks that they're holier than thou. It's like you, you know, you, you've put yourself, and that's why I like how you said it's a journey. Don't put yourself somewhere and you're not there. That's yeah. where you go from one precept to another, you know, and so you stay where you are until you get understanding, you know, and you, you, you get to a place where now God has, you know, taught you whatever lessons that you needed to learn, yeah. and then you graduate to the next level and then to the next level. Don't try to go here because when you go here, that's when you're offensive. Amen. Great that's question. Fake. Uh, Montrell Armstrong said, I was also taught that I had, that it had to do with action. But it says, but as you said, it's a culture. And as I shared, that, that actions come from the culture. Culture doesn't 
The actions don't make you holy. He said, what is the difference between holiness and righteousness? So in other words, when, when we are born again, righteous is the position. Righteous is who we are. Holiness is the lifestyle. Um, holy, as I said, holiness is the nature. Holiness is the culture. So as you, you can never be any more righteous than God's made you, um, but you're walking and you're living in holiness. And then holiness is the culture that causes spiritual growth. Amen. Amen. Did y'all get anything out of this tonight? Praise God. Amen. We'll continue on Sunday. Amen. There were quite a few people that actually gave their lives to Christ and they raised their hands. If that were you, we simply want you to, um, they're going to put a QR code up behind me. And that QR code, we want you to scan it. Amen. Because how many of you know, as soon as you give your life to Christ, uh, there will be individuals that speak into your ear and the enemy may use them to cause you to doubt the very word that you heard. Maybe you may feel like you may have been unworthy once you made that decision. And so we want to give, an, give you an opportunity to be praying for you. If you don't have anything to scan the QR code, simply raise your hand and the ushers will pass out to you a connect card. Also, if there's anyone that says, hey, pastor, I want to join the family church. If that's you and you desire that this is your church home, simply raise your hand or uh, you can scan the QR code and we'll receive you into this local church. Simply check that I'm joining today and you'll become a member of this local body. No, and if you don't have anything to scan the QR code, raise your hand and the ushers will pass a, uh, a connect card out to you. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise for uh, the decisions that were made here today. For those of you who are watching online, go to our website, go to www.thefamilychurchnj.com. Amen. We're going to prepare our hearts to give. Amen. And so we're going to have Jay Todd. Amen. Let's give it up for Pastor Dawn one more time. Amen. We are still in worship tonight. And so at this time, I want us to prepare our tithes and our offering. Your tithes are between you and the Lord is a 10% of your gross income. And your offering is between you and God. You can speak to the Lord and be led in your giving. We have uh, some giving platforms here. You can give on our website, www.thefamilychurchnj.com. You can also give by way of cash app, dollar sign, TFCNJ. Be sure to put your first and last name and email address, as well as our mail-in opportunity. You can mail your checks that can be made payable to the family church and J to 333 Preston Avenue, Voorhees, New Jersey, 08043, and as well as giving by text. You can text your amount and TFC to 84321. There are so many ways and so many different areas that you can sow into our young adults ministry, missions. There are so many areas that you can sow into this ministry. And so I want you to be able to speak to the Lord tonight. And so be led in your giving, be led um, in your giving tonight. And so we're gonna pray over our offering and then we're going to place our offering in the baskets. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for the seeds that are being sown tonight. Father, we thank you, God, that as a result of the seeds that are sown, that we will receive the harvest. We will receive increase. We thank you that we will not lack. But, Father, we thank you that we will see increase. We give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can give at this time.
let's stand on our feet all over the sanctuary. And if you did not have an opportunity to give, you can absolutely give in the receptacles there in the lobby. You can drop your offering in the receptacles. We're getting ready to end here. Um, but by way of announcements, we have an amazing women's conference coming up in the month of November. Come on, ladies, y'all can make a little bit more noise. I reign women's conference, the focused woman. Uh, we have Nona Jones that will be here, Dr. Jackie Green, Brenda Palmer, and Psalmist Melissa Bethea. You can visit our website, www.thefamilychurchnj.com um, to get your tickets. Tell your mom, tell your sisters, tell your aunts, fellas, tell your girlfriends, husbands, tell your wives. Get your ticket and be in the house. Um, if you were here last year, then you know it was an amazing move of God, and I believe that this year will be even greater. All right? And for any other announcements, you can visit our website. Also, download our church app. If you need to know anything about the family church, you can download our church app. Amen. Were you blessed tonight? Amen. We're getting ready to get out of here. Okay. So we're going to watch a video announcement, and then we're going to do the benediction. your day great with something at Good Eats Cafe where every meal tastes like passion. We believe that great food starts with fresh ingredients and ends with happy faces. From classic comfort food to modern flavors, there's something for everyone at Good Eats Cafe. Good Eats Cafe is where memories are made. Good food, good company, good vibes. That's Good Eats Cafe. It's Pastor Dawn here, co-pastor of the Family Church. Listen, we need you to hurry up and get your ticket for our I Reign Women's Conference. It's time for you to get focused. Listen, that's our theme for this conference. We're going to have some awesome women of God here. Dr. Jackie Green will be in the building. We also got Nona Jones. She will be here. We got Brenda Palmer will be here. Also, we have a psalmist, Melissa Bethea, and she will be here too. I need you to hurry up, get your tickets, go to www.thefamilychurchnj.com and listen, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be epic, but you gotta be in the building. Listen, it's time to get focused. Peace. Hey man, let's stand on our feet. And if you guys don't know where the Good Eats Cafe is, it is right here on our campus, right upstairs, and it's in our cafe. All right. And once again, were you guys blessed tonight? Amen. So we're getting ready to leave. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this night. We thank you for this adjustment spiritually. We thank you that we are maturing. We are growing. Father, we thank you that we are even evolving into holiness. We thank you that we're leaving here with a greater revelation of what it is to be holy. Father, we thank you, God, that you have downloaded and imparted something new in us, and we will not keep it to ourselves. We thank you that the word that we receive will exude out of us, Father, that everywhere that we go and every environment that we're in will be affected by what we heard tonight. We give you the glory, the honor, and praise. We thank you for our pastors, Pastors Ted and Dawn Winslow. We thank you for their yes. And we thank you for what you are doing in this house. In your name we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. And may you are dismissed. Meet us here on Sunday morning at 9.30 and 11.30 a.m., as well as Wednesday night at 7.30. And remember, the family church is where you belong. Have a good night.